famed, of course, for my unique red skin and unparalleled skills as a general of the House of War. I, the Red Prince, was raised within the vast palaces of the fabled Forbidden City. I was destined to become the next emperor. But my ambitions suffered a bit of a setback when I fell from grace for cavorting with demons. Now, I'm exiled and hunted by assassins. But I assure you, I remain undaunted and as determined as ever to claim my rightful throne. I used to be a slave, kept under the thumb of the master, the bastard that made me hunt down my own kin. How did he do that, you ask? With the living scar you see on my cheek, this horror that takes no more than a song sung by Master Dearest to control my very thoughts. But now the tables have turned. I broke my shackles and when I finally find him, I will make the master sing a very different kind of song. Once I was a crusader for the Divine Order. I pledged my life to Lucian the Divine. The war changed everything. He sent me to save the elves I grew up amongst. I arrived too late. Lucian ordered the use of Death Fog against the Black Ring, annihilating everyone I once knew in the process. Now I'm a mercenary killer, one of the infamous Lone Wolves. And my next target is none other than Lucian's own son. Thinking about someone I used to know. My cousin. The queen, in fact. A tyrant. I tried to stop her, but things don't always go according to plan. She cast me out to a forgotten island and made short work of my allies, too. Lucky for me, I was able to commandeer a ship and began a new life for myself out on the high seas. Aye, but I hear that the Queen is at it again. And there's something darker behind her madcap schemes this time. If I don't stop her, I don't know who will. I've been a performer, a musician, 
beloved and celebrated by all. But I have a secret. I'm also a playground for sprites and spirits and worse. The voice that rings inside me now is darker than any that came before. Almost caused a bunch of my fans to rip each other to pieces. <laughs> but you can trust me. I've got this under control. <sighs> Step one, find out who or what is trying to take control of my mind. Step two, make it sorry it ever tried. Don't stare. How would you look after eons in some ghastly crypt? Your people are rather prone to death. Mine are not. Yet when I emerged from my completely unjustified imprisonment, I found them gone. Our culture forgotten. Any trace of the world I knew all but obliterated. I must even hide my true face beneath an ever-shifting mask for fear you savages will attack me. That is how I wander this strange world. Trying to uncover the truth about a history you primitive people never even knew existed.
Once I was a crusader for the Divine Order. I pledged my life to Lucian the Divine. The war changed everything. He sent me to save the elves I grew up amongst. I arrived too late. Lucian ordered the use of Death Fog against the Black Ring, annihilating everyone I once knew in the process. Now I'm a mercenary killer, one of the infamous Lone Wolves. And my next target is none other than Lucian's own son. at me, just as I'd planned. I was shackled and collared, and sent to Fort Joy. I'd come here to kill Godwoken. But instead, I became part of their story. Still a bit groggy, are we? Don't worry. The sedative will wear off soon enough. Easy now. No need to hurry. Get your bearings and report to me upstairs. The things I do to complete a contract. Nice haircut, Smiley. As soon as we get to Fort Joy, it'll be time to have words with this Boris fellow.
Well, that explains the smell anyway. Shaking her fluffy coat, the sheep eyes you balefully, her rectangular eyes like letterboxes to the void. With one sharp hoof, she kicks you right in the shin. Fresh meat. <laughs> nice. Plump. Banded like a chicken's leg, too. That may be so, but look at the flies. <laughs> Ban wisdom. Flies know when a creature will die. And it's around your head they're buzzing, not mine. With two shakes of her stumpy tail, the sheep turns away from you to peruse her hay-filled manger. Did you expect a needle? You there. Come here. Hey. Hey. Get me out of this cage and I'll make it worth your while. You in? Your guess is as good as mine. Someone screamed loud as a banshee. After that, pure pandemonium. They never even told me what I was accused of. Just dragged me down here. Set me free, and I'll set you free. A fair trade, I should think. A gentleman among jesters, you are. Give that lever a pull, and I guarantee we'll both get something out of the deal. Rubbish.
I should have known there'd be trouble. I'm not one to let sleeping dogs lie. The prisoner's buoyant voice darkens as his eyes rest on yours. Ah, oh, freedom. Tastes better than wine. I'm nothing if not a man of my word. And I did give my word I'd set you free, lad. Say your prayers while you've breath to speak them. The halls await. The prisoner's buoyant voice. Oh, I'm nothing if not.
Ready. <laughs> what would he have to gain by killing me? I'll have to keep my guard up. I need aid! Empty. Rubbish.
no known associates. In fact, he seemed quite averse to spending time with the others. knowledge this tomb is. Dallas is such a dear lending it to me. Why, you're looking a bit more chipper. Yes. Looks like that collar fits you snugly enough. Nice bit of... There you are. Not too tight, I hope. The collar, I mean. Oh, not to worry. Every dog has to get used to its leash. In the meantime, your next stop will be Magister William. All passengers have to be registered in the ship's manifest. And he's the chap in charge of the logs. You'll find him on the other side of this deck, in the officer's quarters. Dungeon? You have the gall to call my laboratory a dungeon? I'd be quite annoyed with you if you didn't look so honestly perplexed. Index fingers pressed to her lips, she pauses a moment to give you a scrutinizing gander. My word, you do seem a bit befuddled, don't you? Perhaps I was a bit too generous with that sedative. Oh, well, I'm sure you'll soon gather your wits. Most likely. Eventually. In the meantime, all you need to know is that we're en route to Fort Joy. A new life awaits, and if you're a particularly good boy, perhaps a cure as well. An end to source. For good. Is he? Oh well. Some problems simply sort themselves, don't they? She frowns and peers at you closely, resting the back of one hand on your forehead and taking your pulse with the other. Hmm. Delusions such as these are rare, but not unheard of. I recommend a cup of mulled wine and another night's sleep. Just take it easy. Why, for my peace of mind, of course. Why don't you try casting one of those source spells of yours? See what happens. Currents of magic surge inside you, boiling, bursting, then breaking, only to fade back into your soul like rain into the earth. My, look at the concentration on your face. All will, but no result. There you have it. See? The collar's function. It neuters you of sorts. Makes you unable to cast source. For your own peace of mind, of course. Yours, and the whole world's.
trauma. He was bled by magic. Bloody murder. Looks like someone's hit the Hall of Echoes a little early. A young Magister stands pale and silent. Her knuckles whiten around her weapon as you pass. <laughs> Behind the Magister, a bloodied mass lies in a heap. Gore and limbs lie at odd angles. You can't make out a face amid the mess. There's been a murder. A sorcerer was killed by one of your own. Lucky you were busy getting your collar fitted at the time, or you'd be a suspect like the rest of them. Waters is investigating. She'll figure out who did it. Always does. Ugly sight, isn't it? Burns me up this happened under our protection. We're extremely lucky no void walk and followed the source that did this. Finn didn't see it like that. He was desperate for us to help him. Two things scared the living daylights out of him. His own shadow and his own source. We'll find out who did this. Speaking of... She looks up at you with a mirthless smile. I was on duty in your room when the murder happened. You were asleep the whole time. Didn't even stir. You're one of the only indisputably innocent people on the ship. Unless you can commit murder in your sleep, of course. Not with that collar on you, aunt. Listen. I could use someone to keep their ears open among the passengers. Sometimes they clam up in front of a uniform. Bring me a good lead, and I'll throw in a shiny gold coin for you. How about that? Think about it. It's one of you who got killed, not one of us. We want to find who did it and bring them to justice. Who's your real enemy here? You let me know if you hear anything. Whoever did this is dangerous. Yes, this is a rare kind of magic. I'll need to write to headquarters right away. No known associates. In fact, he seemed quite averse to spending time with the others. <laughs> so, anything interesting for me? I'll take that as a no.
It seems as though there's a pattern in the blood flow. That can't be natural. No marks, no indications of a struggle. Need to find another way. suited for this. It's sea cow, not sea sheep. Haven't got any shears, have you? People these days. You are <clears throat> husband. Would you please tell this very charming gaggle of not at all brat like babes that I am by no accounts this loser woman, nor do I sing, in fact. I'm deathly, deathly allergical. How very correct you are, spouse of mine. Madame Josephine Gribbles de Peeve refuses to be confused with anyone else. What? What's so funny? Her pinched face cracks into a great grin, and she shoos the children away from her with a laugh. Yeah, okay, you found me out. Go on and git, and maybe I'll sing you something when I'm good and ready. She turns to you, dark-eyed and dirty-haired, and smiles flatly. Gotta keep ourselves entertained, haven't we? You presume right. Nope, trying not to find anything out either. Ignorance is bliss. The utterer, the better. Thanks, but I already belong to an elite and exclusive ship gang. We play ball every day after lunch. You're too soft for it. You take care, though. Suddenly, her eyes cloud to an unnatural black. Greyish veins run down her face, and her mouth tightens into a cruel sneer. As quickly as they came, the clouds clear. She smiles as though no change came over her. Good luck, Chief. An elf sits tucked away in a dark spot, lazily rolling dice onto the surface of a barrel. They sound like the dry cackling of an old witch. Snake eyes. She chuckles. I bet that's just what they'll look like. Rolling dice? Deciding fates. 
She eyes you quite seriously. <laughs> Not the future, no. But I can read the past in flesh. One of the perks of being an elf, you see. I'm quite good at it, too. I could lick your arm and tell you how you spent the night before last. Shall I? She gives your arm a vigorous stroke of the tongue, efficient like a cat grooming. Hmm. You were in a cellar with other sorcerers. As everyone lay sleeping, it seems you and another elf engaged in an action somewhat similar to the one I just performed. Only rather more vigorously. She pats you on the shoulder consolingly. There, there, don't you worry, darling. Your secret's safe with me. I don't lick and tell. Don't worry, honey. It isn't yours. She looks you up and down with the merest tint of a coy smile on her lips. Never say never, though. Get saucy with me when you clearly don't know the first thing about sauce. Come on, please, Losa. That's enough now. A broad dwarf sits totally upright on the bench, eyes closed, palms face up on his knees. His beard is a cascade of meticulous plaits, each one braided through with golden medallions. He raises an eyebrow as you approach, but doesn't open his eyes. Listen up, boy. You hear that? What's your name? He turns his head toward you, looking you up and down, and smiles before turning his attention to the ship once more. You look like a boy to me. Listen, if you're interested. Or get gone if you aren't. I've seen more appetizing The ship, of, of course. A wave of sound washes over you. The unintelligible chatter of your shipmates, the groaning of wood from floor to ceiling, the boom, crash and crackle of waves around you, complaints from the sea itself. And? Sick as a leper's cat. From the state of it, I'd say she's being cared for by a bunch of beardless babes who never loved anyone but their own mums. But there's more. Listen close. There now, just like that. Squee! Ah, ah. His eyes snap open as his countenance breaks into an expression of joy. One great paw claps you on the back. The other catches you before you lose your footing. There. You heard that, didn't you? I knew it. I knew it. Aye, this is good news, boy. Good news. No, you beautiful idiot. That wasn't any rat. It was the wheel. Squeaks whenever the helmsman jerks it clockwise, which means we're heading east. Pardon my beard. That means if we've been travelling for... Yes, only 10.34 nautical miles to Fort Joy. Ah, so you've eyes as well as ears, eh? You'll go far, mate, even here. And I don't intend to do away with the custom. Eh, no indeed, boy. But that... In. The dwarf leans back from the table and strokes his beard, gold medallions jingling merrily. His eyes roll over to you. That'll be all. Thank you kindly, boy. He continues stroking his beard, a beatific smile on his lips, and doesn't acknowledge you anymore. You sure about that? You one of them? A divine order loyal? They killed a sorcerer, you know. They'll hide the evidence well enough, but make no mistake. Gods, didn't your mother teach you any manners? She got eaten by a void woken. Forget it. <sighs> I spent my life singing for my slaves to bring me my supper. Finer fare than One boiled day. roots and rotten tubers, too. Would you put a knuckle in it? I'm trying to concentrate. They don't care about us. We're like cattle to them. I'll give you that knuckle if you keep carrying on. One of us wouldn't kill our own. They're picking us off one by one. Can we just skip to the part where I reassure you and you shut up? Meanwhile, the Magisters feast on honeyed meat. Mad? 
Well, well. What have we here? A fresh face in this stale hell. Let's size you up, shall we? See if you'll do. The lizard looks you up and down, like a farmer would a fetching horse. All of a sudden, he grips you firmly by the chin, with the intent of inspecting your teeth. Hmm. There's some discoloration, but I've seen worse. After all, one can't expect to find prime merchandise on a squalid little ship like this. Now then, to business. You will answer me three questions. The first one is this. Can you cook? Oh, goodness, no. And don't even mention the demon's testes that are turnips. On to the second question. Can you knit, weave? In short, uh, tailor? Yes, I can tell from your vagabond chic, a bag is as good as a shirt kind of style. I shouldn't be getting my hopes up. On then to my final query. Have you the ability to administer the upkeep of one's personal appearance? The delicate art of cosmetics is what I'm after. Just as I thought. That explains what's besieging my nostrils. So, three questions asked, three questions answered. Let's evaluate, shall we? As per your own testimony, you have the taste buds of a dung beetle, the fashion sense of a monkey in a clown suit, and your personal hygiene reminds one of a carcass rotting in the sun. That won't do at all, see? I'm sad to say I must deny you the opportunity to be my slave. Ever so sorry. Ask what you must. I've nothing to hide. Seems to me you should be a little more afraid. My slave, of course. Oh, oh, but I see. Yes, I suppose it must take some time for the full extent of my disheartening refusal to sink in. Still, hone your skills, and one day you may just qualify for a position in a lesser household than mine. You keep dreaming, you hear? They don't care about us. We're like cattle to them. <laughs> you! Sorcerer! Blood! No! Go! Oof. One of us kill our own. They're picking us off one by one. Can we just skip to the part where I reassure you and you shut up? You think me mad? Mad? This again. Insufferable, surely. What are you trying to hear anyway? I'll tell you if you can keep it quiet long enough for me to listen. Nice. The Magister starts, recognition growing on his face as he looks right at you. You... you look just like... The Magister's face turns white. He makes a move to step backwards, then stops himself as his hand closes on the weapon at his hip. It is you. Ifan Ben Mezd. I remember you. You were my captain's commander way, way back in the war. The Magister's eyes darken. His face closes over into a cold mask. I always knew you'd end up down low. Lower even than us nobodies in the rank and file. The higher the climb, the louder the splat when you fall. In Fort Joy, you're about to fall further than you thought possible. And I'll be listening for the splat. Happy landings. Ask what you must. I've nothing to hide. Seems to me you should be a little more afraid. There's a killer about, after all. Till overboiling a bit of cabbage becomes a crime, I shall hold my head steady.
Rubbish. Well, you aren't here on my list. Scram, eh? We're trying to catch a killer here. Please, low, sir. I forgot how to sing. I did. It was one of them. I know it. Would you put a knuckle in it? I'm trying to concentrate. They don't care about us. We're like cattle to them. I'll give you that knuckle if you keep carrying on. One of us wouldn't kill our own. They're picking us off one by one. Can we just skip to the part where I reassure you and you shut up? You think me mad? Mad? No. Insufferable? Surely. What are you trying to hear anyway? I'll tell you if you can keep it quiet long enough for me to listen. Come on. Please, Loisa. Be good, you scallywags. The elf is reading a volume of Cranley Hubert's famous encyclopedia. He looks up, his big round eyes scanning your body, absorbing. He reaches out and takes your hand, turning it this way and that, examining it from every angle. Finally, he pinches your skin, gently tugging at it. Fascinating. He sits back and returns to his book, flicking quickly from page to page, completely oblivious to your presence. Hmm? Uh, oh, no. My instinct to survive is quite strong, as with all mortals. I'm not sure why you would... Oh, oh dear. I seem to have crossed some cultural taboo. How difficult. You have my apologies, human. Perhaps I should demand the same from those red-cloaked humans. They laid their hands on me more than once. Perhaps. Perhaps not. Understanding is all rather relative. Take this book, for example. I understand all of it, and yet none of it makes sense. It is simultaneously too detailed and insufficient. I know the beginning of this tale and the end but I am rather missing the middle. Tell me, what do you know of your... our world's history? Oh, please. I have no interest in that. Your books are too full of it already. No, I want to know about the Celestial. I want to know about your gods. This text tells me that they created all creatures, but nothing of what came before. Where did these gods come from? Who are their people? Where are the others of their kind? <sighs> of course you don't have any useful information. Why did I expect anything else? Now please, run along. I have a world to decipher. No amount of pestering will get the elf to take his eyes off his book or respond to your questions. Insufferable, surely. What are you trying to hear anyway? It's a register, sir. Good, good. Magister Williams is just about done with the last passenger. You faring okay so far? He tugs the collar of his uniform and chuckles. <laughs> Sorry you're upset, sir. But we all wear what we wear for a reason. 
You head on in now. Williams will get you short at fast. I've seen more appetizing things coming out of plague-stricken pigs. What on earth is the matter? There's... There's nothing else I can make, Your Majesty. Turnips and water are all I was given. Well, Unacceptable. I've never right. dined on anything less than a dozen course dinner, and I don't intend to do away with the custom. Well, uh, there has been a murder, Your Majesty. Maybe that has the Magisters more concerned than your appetite. Don't you get saucy with me when you clearly don't know the first thing about sauce. things coming out of plague-stricken pigs. There's... there's nothing else I can make, Your Keep Majesty. Turnips and water... And if she oh, tries to run, to shoot to kill. Unacceptable. You seem on edge I've of... never dined on anything what less on than a dozen course matter? dinner, and I don't intend Murder to do away with the custom. And I strongly suspect you know all about it. Well, uh... There has been a murder, well, Your Majesty. Perhaps you're absolutely Maybe right. that has the Magisters more concerned than your appetite. Don't you get saucy with me when you clearly don't know the first thing about sauce. Standing at the centre of the room, you spot a sorcerer haughtily eyeing a pair of nervous-looking magisters. They keep their crossbow trained upon her as she's being interrogated by an officer. So you admit it then? You murdered that poor fella? Yes, I did. But of course, that was only the beginning. She turns her head and looks you straight in the eye. There are others whose lives must end. Good God! The woman's mad! You there, sorcerer! Go and fetch Magister Siwan. We need to do more than collar this maniac. We need to shackle her hands and feet. It means your journey draws to a close. Do stick around for its finale, though, because... She reaches for her collar and simply removes it. I'm just about to create a scene. So do her, man, quickly! If she casts Source, the Void Woken will come. They'll end us all. She smiles with wicked satisfaction. Precisely. <laughs> 